Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and you reach High Ministries. High Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holy and inspired word, the Bible. Let's pray to God, the living God of Yisrael and of the Kirk of the Church. Father, most holy God, most blessed and merciful, the living God of Yisrael and the living God of the Church, we just come to you with, uh, with open hearts praying that your name will be magnified for it is great and you are great so we just come to you as needy people confessing our sins willingly to you and uh, knowing that you will forgive us of our sins and transgressions and uh, by the blood of Jesus and so I just pray in Jesus name that you will receive our thanksgiving for this time of, of Bible study of, of being free enough to study the Bible without interruption, great interruption from 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 someone that wants to do harm to us or anything like that. But and I just um, pray for the same thing for uh, your people all throughout the world. And I just come to you. I have pain, Father, right now, and I'm uh, tired. And so I just come to you. Um, you know, pleading nothing but the blood of Jesus to, to give me boldness, to give me power, to give me vigor, give me strength, clarity, recollection of things, you know. And um, so I just pray uh, that you'll do these things through your holy, blessed spirit. To thy honor, a praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys, this is the coup de grace. <laughs> this is the key. Now, um, I just want to say right off the bat that um i studied um actually not that i studied i i actually i did but i'm just saying that i made this board you know on corel video studio i think it was pro x6 i think it's a corel i don't know if he's even called video studio anymore but it's called like corel uh 20 2024 or something like that or whatever i don't know 2023 i don't know and so um these wonderful wonderful um letters and shadows and stuff like that was done in boris graffiti some of it anyway was done in boris graffiti and some of it was outside of boris graffiti in the in the in the corral uh you know program itself but um but i just forgot to put my name on it you know so so i don't get credit for it all the work that i did in in these beautiful beautiful uh graphics you know i just you know what are you gonna do right now um <clears throat> so we see in the Bible, okay, that the Holy Spirit speaks. Okay, I mean, several times. Now, I made a chart, actually, where he speaks, but that chart um, is damaged. I actually um, have a graphic over a graphic, so the f sort of first two graphics on the top are useless because you can't see them because they're overlapping each other. They're on top of each other. The other stuff in the bottom you can see, but so I maybe I should have you know took the picture anyway, but um and I think one was a title over uh, over um, some verses you know, uh, at least the numbers of the verses so I couldn't get that to you. Um, when I get back to having Corel on a computer or something like that, then I can make those again or I could just you know type them out in regular you know um, phone type font whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then I'll get them to you that way. But let's just study the Greek word apen. Okay? And that's uh, third, third person. And that's from epo. Okay, epo. I think the lexical form is epo. You know, I speak. Okay? Or I say. Or whatever the case may be. This is third person. Okay? Now, um... <coughs> This this graphic says something like this on the top. Okay, let me see if I can unhighlight it. And uh, let me see. So it doesn't want to behave. So that's just it. And I tried to do the rough breathing markers and stuff like that. It's kind of awkward. Other uh, things that I used. I couldn't get Corel to do everything for me. Okay, I couldn't get a final sigma um, when I needed to get a fi final sigma. So people complained about that in other uh, tutorials or Bible studies. And I, I couldn't uh, get some other things like uh, Eota Subscript and, and all of this other good stuff. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't really do that on Corel, you know, so that's just it. So that's just not really my fault. <laughs> okay. 
All right, so let's read this and hopefully it kind of behaves itself, you know. It says over here, Apenta Banuma on the top. The Holy Spirit said. The Holy Spirit spoke or said. Okay, you understand? Now, um, the word for Apen is spelled out Epsilon Iota with the salt breathing marker. And then you got the P, Epsilon and Nu. Okay, it looks like a V, but it's not a V, it's an N in Greek. They have Ta, that's a, that's a neuter article in the singular part of the paradigm, you know, uh, Ha He Ta um, and Ta Ta, Ta, like that. Okay, 24 articles in the, in the, in the so-called definite article uh, paradigm, okay, in, uh, in Biblical Greek. And then you got the word for spirit or for, or for breath or for wind, okay, Panuma. And since, you know, uh, he's speaking, it's the spirit, you know, uh, that's speaking. Or he's, or or it is the spirit that's speaking, you know. What I mean, so you know, it's hard to put language together when you're talking about grammatical uh, gender versus natural gender. You know, understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> and this is grammatical gender, even as a new, just because it's in a neuter, it has to do with grammatical gender and not natural gender. Okay. Now, gen, natural gender will follow. Okay, he, but you, you know, but this is, uh, you know, um, grammatical gender. So, but it doesn't matter because uh, because he's a he, okay? He's not an it. P nu epsilon upsilon, now they called epsilon. Mu, now they called me, and then alpha, okay? Nu, now they called me, as a matter of fact, getting to the getting to the end in Greek. Now, um, <clears throat> this is uh, found and recorded in Praxis, Praxis Apostolon, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 19. Praxis, or the word for Acts, you know, the Acts of the Apostles, right? It's called, it's uh, spelled out uh, P-H-R-O, and these are all capital letters. It's the second, it's the second uh, graphic underneath um, the, the, the the Greek on the top. You got capital letters here, uh, P-H-R-O, Alpha, Kasi, Epsilon, Iota, and Sigma. Okay, then you have, um, and then you have, uh, and I couldn't put the C, I wish I could have put the C, looking letter in English or the you know uh, uh you know uh, uh the the C in English because it will look like the the sigma that looks like a C that's what I'm trying to say. And then Apostolon is actually spelled out um Alpha P Omicron now it's called Omicron Sigma Tau now it's called Tau Omicron um Lambda Omega and Nu now it's called Ni. And again this is in Praxis Apostoloni actually Apostles chapter uh ten verse nineteen. Now, the middle graphic, that's big enough for you guys. That's a pen. Now, I have a transliter transliteration on the bottom, uh, E-I-P-E-N. Then I have a period there. Um, again, a pen is spelled out epsilon iota. That's a diphthong. And then you, add a, you have a P and epsilon and nu. Now, I have Greek on the top, so that's kind of nice. And just as a reminder, it says, please, it says over here, please read Greek from left to right. That's a very good reminder by, by me on this uh, board over here. Note it says over here, the Hebrew word, okay, for said is amar. And then I have the, the Hebrew right here, okay, all right, uh... And uh, it looks like an X, and then there's like a T-looking thingy underneath it. I couldn't get the, I couldn't get the comments right smack in the middle under the the letter. I couldn't do it. So it's, it's kind of sort sort of to the side a little bit, under it, but to the side, you know, which is, which is I couldn't do anything better than that. So, so you have Aleph there, which is the final letter, and then comets, which is an A class. Okay, comets, and then you have the the Mem in Hebrew, which is it looks like a half a M. And you remember you read now, okay, you read uh, Hebrew from right to left. That's the opposite of Greek, okay? And then you have an A class like in the word hat. It looks like a, a dash or a, or a minus sign. That's an A class like in the word hat. And then you have the R. It's like an opposite side looking R, okay? Um, that's the resh. It means head, by the way. Just that letter, you understand what I'm saying? But amar, okay, means said that's the hebrew equivalent to this greek uh what now what do i have in the bottom i have in the bottom over here says said 
okay underline and then the spirit okay and then what you what you're gonna do is gonna in English you're just gonna say the spirit said okay it does and does and does the Acts of the Apostles in English this time chapter 10 verse 19 nice graphic um, now the Holy Spirit saying something is recorded in chapter 1 of the Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 when he spoke to Philip chapter 10 and then um, I believe um, I believe also in chapter 16 right chapter 13 and then you have him speaking in uh, chapter 28 and I believe also in chapter 20 I didn't put it to I, I put it to memory a long time ago but I just forgot where all the verses uh, are of him uh, speaking but I believe uh, it's found and recorded these verses um, in uh, chapter 1 chapter 8 chapter 10 I believe chapter 11 as well because the story is repeated in chapter 11 and by Peter um, and uh, just look at chapter 13 chapter 16 chapter 20 maybe chapter 21 and look at chapter 27 and chapter 28 so there's a sprinkle all around and we we know that he did say something to the churches in the book of revelation uh, four times the spirit speaks in uh, chapter 2 and three times the spirit speaks in chapter 3 okay and then i believe there's one in timothy and, and, and sprinkle all around the bible so the holy spirit does speak not only does he have a mind Okay, I don't know where the acute marker is, uh, franema or franema, you know, but the word for mind, he has a, he has a mind, you understand? He has a will, thelo, also, <clears throat> according, you know, he gives the gifts uh, according to his will, and I believe that's in uh, chapter 2 of, uh, of Hebrews, not only that, but you see that he has a will in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 giving gifts according to his will as well okay so and he could be grieved okay so that's just the deal now just because he's poured out okay on people it doesn't mean he's not um he's not um uh, a person because uh, the apostle paul uh says i believe in second timothy that he's about to be poured out as a drink offering also you understand okay see that's just the deal so I hope you enjoyed this little tiny study on the Greek word apen, which means said, and that the Holy Spirit said, okay, many, many things throughout um, um, uh, the Acts of the Apostles, the Book of Revelation, and other books at the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? Not to mention that he's the spirit of supplication, the spirit of chen, uh, okay, spirit of supplication. Tachanunim is actually supplications in the plural. The em is making that plural over there in Zechariah, I believe, chapter 10, right? Chapter 10 or chapter 12. <clears throat> and I have a graph of, a, of that. I should have actually took a picture of it, but I, but I did. But he is the spirit of grace. He's the, he's a, I mean, um, uh, it's, uh, you know, um, that, that he prays, that he prays. I will pour out the spirit of supplication, it says over there in Zechariah. So he prays, he has a mind, he knows all the deep things of God, recorded. All the things of, the deep things of God. Now, I think I took a picture of that, so let me read that before I leave, okay? So let me check that out, okay? And I'm going to be studying some more of these graphics in the future, okay? So let's see where I have everything here. I think, uh, and I have some pictures of my wife here, and and uh, some pictures uh, I'm going to do a King James only thing there's my wife there right next to me there this is uh, uh, the, the angels say Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh Holy, Holy, Holy I believe covering the entire Trinity and uh, let me see here for this from the NASP this is it right here, record it and with this I'll let you go, okay so that's over here for okay now, let me see what, what it says over here. Oh, for to us, for to us, God revealed, okay, uh, revealed, let me see, I'm using a magnifying glass, guys, revealed, okay, for to us, God revealed them through, 
okay, the spirit for the spirit searches all things, probably uh, panta there, all things, even the baphos in Greek, the deep, the depths or the deep things of God, like another translation says, the depths of God says this translation, the N-A-S-B. You understand what I'm saying? So, I mean, this is saying that the Holy Spirit knows everything. It knows the deep things of God. So you can't say as a Jehovah's Witness, oh, give us a double question. How come uh, Jesus doesn't know uh, the hour or the day of his coming and the Holy Spirit doesn't know? Okay? Because he knows all the deep things of God. And in Christ is, is, is hidden all the riches of wisdom. Okay? So this idea that he doesn't know now, well, then how is he going to come if he doesn't know? If he doesn't know, how is he going to come? I never thought of that before. You know, that's why it's good to pray. How in the world is Christ going to come? Okay, you understand what I'm saying? If he doesn't know when to come. Well, the, the Father's going to tell him, oh, well, get up. You know, the clock just rang. Okay, and it's time for you to go to earth. Oh, come on, get lost with that stuff, man. You understand what I'm saying? The Greek word for um, show is not is not described of the Father showing something to Jesus in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. It's actually edoken. Is a me verb you know, from diddle me. You understand what I'm saying? Dugnami, uh, um, uh, I think it's uh, the word there. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but uh, dexai is the textual form. I think dignumi is the uh, uh, lexical form. It's also a me verb, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's, a, it's an infinitive to show. Okay, a verbal noun. Okay, that's not that's not recorded for the a father uh, uh, giving the revelation to Jesus. He didn't show him the revelation. He gave him the revelation and edokin, the uh, kappa, uh, the kappa uh, aorist is there. It's usually sigma, really, basically. You know, uh, the basic form for the aorist uh, morphine is sigma alpha or sigma epsilon. You know, in the third person. Um, or maybe it doesn't have a sigma at all. But the thing is that uh, there's an augment there, epsilon, right in front of uh, uh, the stem do uh, in edoken. And the kappa epsilon is the aris morphine there. That's an the aris tense. He showed, okay, I'm sorry, I take that back. Okay, he gave him the revelation so that he can show, okay, to show to his, uh, to his um, doulois, uh, to his uh, uh, servants, or slaves. So that's just the deal right here. So, um, what do we learn in this in this short, very short lesson? That's my mother actually right there, Nilda Rucci. My mother, she passed away in 2012. That's my wife there. Now, where is where is the A pen deal? Okay, so let me see where's that at. So um, that's it's right here. So what do we learn? Well, we learned this. Well, we learned what A pen means. It's in the third person. It's from the Greek word epo which means um, I said, or I say, right? I say. And that's always in the present uh, tense uh, above, um, you know, at least at least the, the main vein. Um, and, then they, 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 and then they have other constructions like the future tense, so they could have that in George Reckerberry's uh, lexicon. I mean, you know, the genitive uh, mouse will have that probably, you know. But uh, a pen means a set, and it's spelled epsilon iota, a p epsilon nu. The Hebrew is amar, amar. Spelled out um, aleph with the kametz, uh, mem with the pathach, that's the A class that looks like a minus sign, pathach, and then resh, which is the opposite side looking R, you know. We learn also that we, you know, just in, in, in sort of quickly that you read a Greek from uh, uh, from uh, left to right, you read Hebrew from right to left. Um, the Acts of the Apostles uh, has uh, sprinkled within its pages of the Holy Spirit speaking to, to 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 several people in chapter one, chapter eight, chapter ten, probably chapter eleven. See chapter thirteen, chapter sixteen. Right, uh, chapter 20, 27, 28, and there's more. There's more. There's not, those are not the only ones. You know what I'm saying? And also, we we um, found out that Revelation uh, chapter uh, two and chapter three has the Holy Spirit speaking four times in chapter two, four uh, three times in chapter three.
you see. And um, so that's just the deal. Um, basically, um, there's other things that we learn, but those are of a ni minor uh, nature. How to spell praxis apostolone? What's, what is praxis apostolone? It means the acts of the apostles. So we saw that briefly. You know, it doesn't really have to do with the study in and of itself. But I mean, but these verses are found in the acts of the apostles. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? And then we saw um, that uh, panuma. Some people pronounce it numa, but it's better pronounced panuma. Um, and I think we get that from English habit. You know, you know um, not pronouncing the p like in like in uh, 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 Psycho, that movie of Alfred Hitchcock, you know, uh, Psalms. We just say Psalms. We don't say Psalms, you know. <laughs> There's a P there. So I, I think that we get that habit from the English and we carry it over to the Greek, but that's not good because what are you going to do with Katissus, you know? So just because it's a cons consonant um, right in front of the Tau in Katissus, which means creation or foundation or creature or founding a city, you understand what I'm saying, physically, well, then, I mean, you know, it's just a bad habit not to, you know, just to sort of be lazy with the first uh, with, the, with the first part of this. Uh, 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 what? Actually, you saw the semantic range also briefly, uh, that it can mean spirit. It can uh, mean uh, breath, and it can mean, uh, you know, uh, can mean um, wind. Uh, Panuma is found and recorded um, a couple of, t uh, a few times in um, in chapter um in chapter uh, 3 of uh, John's Gospel. And in one point, it's pronounced, you know, it's translated spirit. In another point, it's translated wind. The wind blows, you know, like that, you see. But then the same word is found a little bit later. And so is, you know, everybody who's born of the spirit. So it's the same Greek word, you see. So it has a semantic uh, domain, semantic range. I call it the semantic pool. Um... Now, um, the Holy Spirit, okay, I already mentioned also in the body of this uh, address that um, that the, the, the Holy Spirit has a mind. Romans chapter eight verses twenty six and twenty nine, uh, uh, twenty six and twenty seven. Fran, franema. I have to look at the acute mark of franema. Or franema is there for mind. He has a will. Thelo, okay, and. Uh, and also, I mean, he has a will. Um, you can look at just purely that he has a will in First Corinthians chapter 12 and Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 2 around verse uh, 3 or 6. Okay? He could be grieved. You understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> and, um, and, and he leads people. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. Greek word ago there. Right? Uh, in a different construction, but nevertheless is there. In Romans chapter 8, verse 14. So he leads people. He selects deacons. Okay? Praxis Apostolon, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse uh, what? Verse uh, 28. So he selects people. You understand? And um, and he descended on Jesus like a, like a dove, proving that he has personality. You see? The, the gentleness of the Spirit. The, the, the tenderness or the... Uh, of the spirit and the and the um and the sensitivity of the spirit. You know, someone saying he's very sensitive, very sensitive. He could be quenched because he's sensitive. You know, he's sensitive uh, uh, toward uh, sin. So that's just the deal. He could be filled with him, but he's still sensitive. You know. And so um, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit is that he's the third person of the Trinity. Is not that he's third person in place like he comes third in, like in the race I mean you know you have the you have the father in first place and, and Jesus is talking is chugging along you know and then the Holy Spirit happens to come in third place it's, it's just no such thing in Christianity and I say this because um, the order changes okay in the Bible sometimes the Holy Spirit is first sometimes Jesus is first sometimes the father is first okay so that's for our benefit that we designate you know, um, you know, uh, the first, per first and second, third person of the Trinity, because, okay, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a distinction. It's a, it's a necessary dis distinction. Okay, we can't say there's only one person of God, and then everybody's number one, according to you know, person is concerned. 
we just say one, two, three, because, I mean, if you have three apples on the table, you have three apples on the table, and you can count either on either side. You can start from the left or start from the right, like Greek and Hebrew, you know, and start from the middle if you want to, and go left and right, or start from the middle and go right, left and right. It doesn't make a difference, okay? They're not in, none of the apples are in first place, you know? You understand what I'm saying? None of them are necessarily better than the other, okay? And then, uh, and so that's just the deal. Now, um, so, and I was looking at a Greek word that, that helps you sort of understand the Trinity a little bit. Uh, the Trinity is very hard to understand because the subsistence of God is something that we'll never understand. The eternal subsistence of God. Okay, the nature of the Father, the nature of the Holy Spirit, and nature A or 1 of Jesus. Okay, the God nature, if you will. Let me get to that in a second, but let me just finish with my other previous thought. I said that, uh, let me make sure this is on the highlight, and it is, you know, that the awe that sometimes changes, well, where's that recorded? Somebody, somebody says, well, just look at Ephesians chapter 4, 5, and 6. I mean, chapter 4, verses 4, 5, and 6, okay? And look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4, 5, and 6. Look at, um, okay, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14 okay see the all that change uh, see um, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 alongside of um, you know uh, the famous one recorded in the gospel Kata Matthayan, Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and then you have other ones as well that mentions uh, the spirit you understand what I'm saying the spirit sometimes is number one sometimes is number three in 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 order, not in importance and not in place, and not in class. Okay, this is not the watchtower. You understand what I'm saying? That they got the, they got the, 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 the they got the, the, the other sheep, the anointed class of this is. Come on, man. It's not. It's not. It's not like that at all. You understand what I'm saying? There's no first class in the Trinity. No one is first class over the other one. You understand what I'm saying? Because Jesus emptied himself. Okay, he emptied himself of glory, and then he commands the Father to get it back. A lot of people don't understand that there's an imperative there in verse 5 of chapter 17 of the Gospel Kata Ioanne of John's Gospel, uh, Good News Account, and that's an imperative. Now, it wasn't a sassy attitude that Jesus had toward the Father, no, but it was nevertheless a command. Now, we call it the, the you know, imperative of entreaty, but it's a command. He's commanding the Father to give him the glory back. Okay, you know, this is just a bold prayer. Nothing wrong with that at all. If my son can speak, and he can't because he's only one years old, I mean, he could command me to do certain things that I promised uh, uh, to do for him. You know what I'm saying? Well, well uh, Dad, you promised me to go to, uh, that we could go to uh, Jollibee. Okay? Let's go. Oh, I did, by the way. <laughs> so this is, this is, this is, this is, you know. Okay, come on, let's go, let's go. Oh, you want to go now? Yeah. I want to go now, Dad, because you promised me. Oh, well, you know, okay. keep my promise. You understand what I'm saying? So that was the bargain. That was the deal. Okay, that was the council of, of the Trinity. It was, it was embedded in that council. It was embedded in the bargain and the deal. I empty myself, okay, of glory, but you have to give me the glory back. You understand what I'm saying? You have to get me out of shield, and that's why I know. Thou shalt not um, leave my soul in shield, and now thou will not allow thy holy one to see shachat, corruption in Hebrew, shachat. Vethara, I think, in the Greek uh, Septuagint in Psalm 15, verse 10, because this is, the order is different in, 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 in the Greek Septuagint. You understand what I'm saying? So, so like I said before, the Holy Spirit is not third place in, 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 or, or third in class. No, no, it's just, it's just an order. And sometimes the order is different according to those verses. A scripture. This is Angelo Quinone is given glory to the God of Israel, of the Kirk also. And Kirk uh, means uh, church in, Scot in Scotland, you know, in Scottish. And um, God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. So there's no annihilation. You know? The land with the original languages are very important to God, and they are bashos. You know what I'm saying? Just look at God, you know, John's gospel. You see? 
And just so you know, like a Abaddon, Apollyon, and the book of Revelation, you understand what I'm saying? The Greek, the Hebrew is, you know, whatever the case may be. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, and not that I was the, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, no, in, in the past tense, uh, you know, like in the imperfect tense in, in Greek. But I, I am. That's in the present tense. You understand what I'm saying? That's in the present tense. I, you know, I am uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you understand what I'm saying? So that's just the deal. So who are you going to listen to? The tower that got everything wrong or that Jesus that got everything right? You understand? This is Angelo Quinones. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up and please leave a comment on the screen. All right, guys, so this is just a deal. So I have over here, okay, a document that was sent to me by the Christian Research Institute when it was the Christian Research Institute way back in the 1990s, okay? All right, um, this institute was founded by Dr. Walter Martin, the Christian apologist. And uh, unfortunately, it's not the same anymore, but I got the document when... The Christian Research, Research Institute was in its heyday, okay, you understand, and it's valuable, you know, today. And this document is called The Biblical Basis of the Doctrine or the Teaching of the Trinity. Now, I am on page 13 of this document. And um, I had a couple of copies, and unfortunately I didn't bring, the, you know, all of the copies with me, but at least I have one copy over here. And I say over here because I relocated from the United States to the Philippines to my chagrin. But anyway, you know, what are you going to do? Okay. All right. Now, this section, okay, section four, is entitled, okay, speaks. Now, what does this mean? Okay. It is quoted, meaning the Holy Spirit is quoted as speaking. Speaking. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to look at the verses uh, later, but let me just quote them now, okay? Let me just quote them now, you understand? So that's just the deal. So this section is section 4, and this has to do with the Holy Spirit speaking, you understand? Okay, now, um, so let's get those verses. Now, he's quoted as speaking in John chapter 16, verse... 13. John chapter 16, verse 13. Acts chapter 1, verse 16. And there are a lot in the Acts of the Apostles. Praxis of Apostle Acts chapter um, 1, verse 16. Acts chapter 8, verse 29. That's 829 of the Acts of the Apostles. All of these are from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 10, verse 19, that's chapter 10, verse 19. Chapter 11, verse 12, okay? Chapter 11, verse 12, you know, the, the story uh, of Peter receiving, the, uh, receiving um, uh, the revelation and being spoken to by the Holy Spirit. So, you know, 10, 19, and uh, 11, 12, meaning uh, chapter uh, 10, verse 19, and chapter 11, verse 12. Now, in the same book... We see him speaking in chapter 13, verse 2. Chapter 13, verse 2. Okay, he speaks. Now, he also speaks, is recorded, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 6. We're going to look at all these verses, okay, later on. Chapter 16, verse 6, you understand. Now, when we go to chapter 20, we see him speaking in chapter 20, verse 23. Chapter 20, verse 23. Of the acts of the apostles. We also see him speak in chapter 21 and verse 11. Chapter 21 and verse 11. We also see him speak in chapter 28, verses uh, 25 through 27. That's chapter uh, 28, verses 20, uh, 25 to 27. Okay, that's the Acts of the Apostles. So basically, that's about all of them in Acts. Now, there's another one in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. There's another one recorded of the Holy Spirit speaking in Hebrews at chapter 3, 
verses 7 through 11. That's chapter 3, verses 7 through 11. And another one in Hebrews in chapter 10, verses um, 15 through 17. Chapter 10, verses 15 through 17, record it. You understand? Okay, so again, you see it in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 11, Hebrews chapter 10, verses 15 through 17, and 1 Peter chapter um, 1, verse 11. There's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. 1 Peter, okay, you understand? Uh, chapter 1 and verse 11. Revelation, okay, you have seven times there that the Holy Spirit speaks, okay, to the churches, you understand? You see it in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, 11, 17, and 29. That's Revelation chapter 2. Verses 7, 11, 17, 29. Okay, let's go to chapter 3 of Revelation. You see him speaking in verse 6, 13, 22. Okay, you got that? Revelation chapter 3. Okay, Revelation chapter 3. Verses 6, 13, and 22. So you have, you know, a whole bunch of times that the Holy Spirit speaks. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed that. So let's go now to the verses. Okay? So we're going to be using uh, the NASB because it's a very easy, at least on my phone, it's a very easy app to, to control and to maneuver. Okay? So we're going to use that because we have to maneuver through, you know, all the verses instead of taking pictures and stuff like that, which I can easily do. But let me um, maneuver um, easily through an app that has to do with the NASB because it's just more easier, like I said before. So stay tuned. All right, guys. Now, welcome to the reading of these scriptures now. Okay, now we have a whole bunch of scriptures that we could use okay, to either reach or to defeat uh, Jehovah's Witnesses or any other cult or sect or even false religion that comes against the truth of the Holy Spirit being not only God, but a, a person, okay, that he has personality. Now, the first scripture that we were checking out on the list has to do with John chapter 16 and verse 13. So let's check that out, okay? John chapter... Okay, um, John chapter uh, 16, verse 13. Okay, that's just it. So let's see where this is at here. Okay. And I hope, you know, I hope, hopefully it doesn't, you know, roll or anything like that, you know. But when he, meaning the Holy Spirit, okay, when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth for he will not check it out for he will not speak on his own initiative it says over here but whatever he okay here's here's he will speak he will speak and he will um disclose to you that is to come or what is to come okay so that's uh telling you that the holy spirit okay and this is at the time of jesus okay will speak so this is one of the verses i have to do with the holy spirit speaking okay you understand what i'm saying so that's just the deal now um in our next session after this we'll, we'll be looking at the greek at least of some of these verses anyway maybe not all but it's because there's far too many, you know, this is, this is, this is, listen, this is the prosecution making the case that the Holy Spirit is a person and he speaks against the defendants, so-called, okay, uh, JWs and, and Islam and everybody else, you understand what I'm saying? That doesn't believe these things. Now, the Holy Spirit speaks. It's right here recorded. 
Now let's go to the Acts of the Apostles. Okay, the Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 1, you understand, and verse 16. Okay. We have to put all this in memory. I had all this in memory one time, but it's just, you know. But uh, but we can do it again. It says over here, chapter 1, verse 16, of the Acts of the, uh, uh, the, Acts of the Apostles, Praxis Apostolon, you understand, that's the name of the book in, in Greek. Brethren, okay, the scripture had to be fulfilled. The scripture had to be fulfilled, which, okay, the Holy Spirit foretold. Okay, see, foretold by the mouth, okay, of David. Foretold by the mouth of David concerning, okay, Judas, uh, who became a guide, okay, to those who arrested Jesus. But see, he foretold. So he spoke there through David, but nevertheless, he spoke. He spoke through David, and David spoke uh, to uh, the children of Israel. But but the Holy Spirit is said to speak here. Record it. Now let's go to um, chapter 8. Okay, chapter 8. Um, let's see here. I can't really see the chapter, though. That's the problem. So I'm going to have to do this the old-fashioned way because the phone is damaged. So I can't look... I can't look high enough there. So I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way, unfortunately. You know, it's just too bad. Unless I can remember the, you know, the the waves, you know, that I that I used to get to the chapter. But, you know, I didn't do that. But anyway, so let's go to chapter uh, 8, verse 29. Okay, chapter 8. Uh, the Acts of the Apostles in verse 29, which is right over here. Okay. All right, so let's check it out. So, so far we have, um, you know, uh, chapter 16, verse 13 of John, that the Holy Spirit speaks, and chapter 1, verse 16 of the Acts of the Apostles. Over here there says, Then the Spirit said to Philip. This is, what is, this is recorded what he said. Now let's go and read this again. It says over here, Then the Spirit Capital S, by the way, said to Philip, go up and join this chariot. You see? You see? You see? So the Holy Spirit is speaking yet again. Now let's go to the Acts of the Apostles chapter 10. Okay, so that's 9 there, and that's 10. Okay. And let's go to uh, verse 19, where it's recorded that the Holy Spirit uh, said something. You understand? Because this is uh, verse 19 right here. Record it. The Spirit said to him, Behold, th three men are looking for you. Let's read this again. It's quite clear. This is verse 19 of chapter 10 of the actually <laughs> Apostles. While Peter was reflecting on the vision the Spirit said to him, meaning to Peter, Behold, three men are looking for you. So that's another time that the Holy Spirit is said to be uh, speaking. Now let's go to, um, all right. Let's go, chap let's go to chapter 11, verse 12, you understand. Okay, same book, yeah, <laughs> actually, a Bible. So let's go to that. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's go, go, go. This is verse 2. Let's go to verse 12. You understand? And again, my phone is damaged, so it's hard to see um, where's verse 12 at. Okay, so I mean, you know, it's very damaged, this phone. I need a new phone. But we'll, we'll you know, me and you will do the best, you know, we can do. Now, it says over here, the Spirit, the Spirit told me to go. This is Peter speaking. Without misgivings. Okay, let's just read this again. It's quite clear. Verse 12 of chapter 11 says, The Spirit told me to go with them without misgivings. Okay, now let's go to chapter 13. 
of the same book, the Acts of the Apostles. Okay, let's go to verse uh, 2. Chapter 13 of the Acts of the Apostles, Praxis Apostolon. Okay, you understand? Verse 2. Quote, While they were ministering to the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, you see, said, set apart for me, okay, Barnabas and Saul, for the work to which I, okay, have called them. You see the sovereignty of the Holy Spirit, by the way. And you see that collaborated, meaning him choosing, okay, the gifts, okay, choosing the gifts and, 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 and people, okay, his thelo, his will, recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Hebrews chapter 2, I think verses uh, 3 or 6, okay, and so that's just the deal. Now to mention the Acts of the Apostles, this book, okay, he chooses deacons, you know, chapter 20, verse uh, uh, verse 28, you understand what I'm saying? But over here, it says very clearly, clearly, okay, in verse 2, while they were ministering to the Lord, and fasting, the Holy Spirit, Greek word panuma, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul. You see? You see? You see? But that's not, that's, that's, that's enough, but that's not all. <laughs> okay. Let's go to chapter 16 and verse 6. Chapter 16 Yenistan and verse 6. I mean, this is an ample, ample supply, okay, of verses. No, we don't need anything else. There's a whole bunch of verses saying that the Holy Spirit speaks or spoke in the Bible. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, chapter 16, verse 6 of the Acts of the Apostle. They passed through the uh, Phrygian. Uh, see over here. And. Uh, Galatian region having been for check this out forbidden by the Holy Spirit okay to speak uh, the word in Asia they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit so so I mean in order to 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 forbid somebody okay you're gonna have to speak you understand what I'm saying that's just all there is to it so let's go to the Acts of the Apostles again. We don't have to go there, we're there. Okay. We see 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's go to uh, chapter 20 and verse 23. Okay. All right. So I just skipped it a little bit. So let's just go back a little bit there. You understand? Okay. So it's, I guess it's this one right here. Okay. All right. So let's check it out says over here except that the holy spirit except that the holy spirit solemnly testifies solemnly testifies okay to me in every city saying that bonds and afflictions await me so, I mean, you know, that's a whole bunch of times he was speaking. It's not only just this verse, but he said every city. You know what I'm saying? You know how many cities? Especially when he was talking about Greek cities. City-states. I mean, talking about, you know, I don't know if he went to every every single uh, state in Greece. I mean, it was about a thousand of them, but I'm just saying, I mean, you know. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. So this is more than just one time that he was doing this. I mean, he had a custom... Uh, talking to the Apostle Paul. Okay, you understand what I mean? Now, let's go to, to the next chapter, chapter 21 and verse 11. Okay, and the Holy Spirit is going to be, okay, speaking again. So, uh, that's just a deal. So, let's go to, okay, you understand? Um, let's go to... And uh, let me see, because it's hard to see, because it's just so damaged the phone that it's actually, it's, it's hard to see the number. Uh, 
Uh, says this over here in the Acts of the Apostles. And coming to us, he took Paul's belt. Okay. And bound his own feet and hands. And said... This is what the Holy Spirit says in this way. The Jews at Jerusalem will ban the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Is that clear? That's why prophecy is very ne needed in the Christian Kirk, in the Christian church. You understand know what I mean? It's an idea. There is no prophecy in the church. I mean, who says? Ah, oh, when that's perfect comes and that's the, that's the Bible. Come on, stop. It says, then we shall know even as we are known. I mean, come on, we don't know as we, as we, we, don't know as we are known. Come on, man. Read chapter 13 more perfectly, you know, and then you're going to come to the conclusion that we still have the gifts of of charisma for today but that's another argument that's another that's another that's another topic all right let's go to um acts chapter 28 that was 21 right so uh, 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 let's go to hopefully that's 28 okay it's very hard to see you got you guys could see it but it's very hard for me to see it Okay, because uh, because of the the brokenness <laughs> of the phone. Let's go to um. Let's go to uh, verse twenty-five, and let's check this out. Okay, several verses here recorded. It's not just only twenty-five. It's twenty-five through twenty-seven. So I'm gonna do the best I can to read this. This, um, you know, with the phone like this guy, so I apologize. Okay, it's just like reading a scroll, for goodness sakes. It's just like, it's, I mean, you know. I mean, I'd ra I rather read a Greek, uh, uh, you know, a papyri. That's how bad this is. This is this is bad. Okay, you understand? All right, so let me see where I'm at. And then I probably skipped it already. Okay, so this, I guess this is it right here. It's hard to see really incredible i guess this is three let me see anyway 4k24 all right and 25 is right here record it all right so let's check this out it says over here and when they and when they did not agree with one another okay they began they began leaving after paul had spoken uh, one parting, one parting what? The Holy Spirit rightly spoke, rightly spoke through, okay, Isaiah, the prophet, uh, to your fathers. Okay, to your fathers, it says over here, verse 26, saying, look at that, he's still, he's still speaking, saying, go to this people, go to this people and say, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. And you will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. Okay. For the heart, for the heart of this people has become dead. Has become dull and with their ears. Okay, they scarcely hear, and they and uh, they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear. With their ears and understand with their hearts and return, and I would 
heal them. Okay? Well, you see the Holy Spirit speaking in verse 25 of this uh, verse. All right, so let's go to, okay, um, 1 Timothy, you understand? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. And you're going to see that the Holy Spirit speaks there. In that chapter and verse. 1 Timothy, okay, so it's 1 Timothy right here. Chapter 4 and verse 1. So let's check it out. Let's check this out. This is from the NSB. But the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, expressly or explicitly, this translation says, okay, see, says right there, says that in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith. Okay, ellipsis. We'll just stop right there. But the Spirit explicitly says, it's not only says, but explicitly says, there's an adverb over here, that in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith. You see? There you go right there. Okay? So we have recorded another verse of Scripture that indicates that the Holy Spirit said something. And this is found and recorded in 1 Timothy, okay, you understand? 1 Timothy chapter... Okay, First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. But let's go on to another verse. Okay, we're not finished yet. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 3 verses 7 through 11 and Hebrews chapter 10 verses 15 through 17. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 3 verses 7 through 11. And we're probably not going to read the whole thing. Just, you know, where the Holy Spirit is speaking. So let's go to the book of Hebrews. Okay, I mean, you know, this is some this is some case. Okay, this is some case. I'll tell you that right now. And this is, I mean, you know, this is this is I mean, this is an indictment and this is I mean, you know, this is no acquittal going on over here. You understand what I'm saying? This is going up to 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 you know, prosecution. You understand what I'm saying? So let's go to chapter three of this book, you understand? And let's go to verse seven, you see. And if it says it right off the bat, then we don't have to read the other verses, okay? Therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, there you go, that's all. Says right over there. The Holy Spirit says. Now let's just read what he says. Today you, okay, uh, you hear uh, his voice. Okay, the, 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 you know. And then it continues continues the message. You understand what I'm saying? Do not harden your hearts. You understand what I'm saying? Now they provoked him. Now they provoked God in the in the Old Testament. So I mean provoking God and provoking the Holy Spirit. That's just the same old thing. You understand what I'm saying? Provoking the same being. You understand? But let's go to chapter 10. Okay, this is uh, chapter 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's go to chapter 10 and verse 15 through 17. You understand? You understand? Chapter 10, verses 15 to 17 in the book of uh, Hebrews. That's uh, chapter 18 right there. You understand? That's chapter, uh, let me see, or verse uh, 17. Let's see verse 17. Let's see verse 16 right here. Record it. So let's go and see. So, let's just see. Okay, let's go to, okay, uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 10, verse 15. It says, unlike this, And the Holy Spirit also testifies this. For after saying, and see, you know, it's, it's, this is what he says. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. 
wait a minute, but the Holy Spirit is speaking. And the, 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 the Lord is saying? Isn't that the same thing? I'm just saying. I mean, you have the Lord speaking in verse 15 of this book. And the Holy Spirit says over here, also testifies to us for after shame. That's what it says. So let's go to another verse of Scripture where the Holy Spirit is saying something. Yes. <laughs> this is delicious. Delicious. All right, so again, he says something in, uh, I'm not going to say all the verses again, but First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 11, and Hebrews chapter 10, verses 15 through 17. And now we come to, okay, First Peter. You understand? First Peter. Eh? First Peter chapter 1, verse 11, I believe. Okay? So let's, uh, let me grab the phone over here, and let's go to, uh, let's go to 1 Peter, you understand? That's just a deal. 1 Peter chapter 1 and, um, verse 11, so it has to be right over here, okay? You understand? Let's go read it. All right, let's read 1 Peter chapter, uh, 1 verse 11. It says over here, seeking no... What person or time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating, as it says over here, as he predicted the suffering of Christ and the glories to follow. But see, he predicted, says over here, he predicted, okay, and that's just the deal. Indicating, indicating, predicting, I mean, you know, what else you want, you know what I mean? But let's go to the last book of the Bible. And I mean, it's C7 versus Ma. Okay, you understand what I mean? That's just it. So let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Well, we're going to see four times in this chapter that the Holy Spirit Okay, said something, you understand? Okay, so, and uh, I believe verse 7 is right here, okay, let's check this out. All right, let's read, okay, uh, Revelation chapter uh, 2, verse 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, you see? Ellipsis, by the way. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a deal. I mean, it says over here that the Holy Spirit speaks. That's what, that's, that's, that's what it says. Now, let's go on. Okay, and read verse 11, 17, and 29 of this, uh, of this chapter. So, let's go to... Um, <clears throat> Let's go to uh, verse 11 here, record it. You understand? That's just the deal. And that's it. Now let's read what it says to another church. He who has an ear, let him hear what the who, what the Spirit says in churches. That's what it says over here in verse 11. But we're not finished. That's more. Let's go to verse 17. Yes. Let's go to verse 17, y'all. That's just the deal. Let's not stop, you know. I like this ride, don't you? You want to get off now? I mean, this is ready to roll. <laughs> it says over here in verse 17 of the same chapter, chapter 2 of Revelation. Okay. He who has... An ear, okay. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. See, that's uh, so we read verses 7, 11, and 17 so far, but we're not finished yet. Let's go to verse 29. 
You see what I'm saying? Why stop? I mean, I'm enjoying this ride, like I said before. I mean, you know, who gets out of a roller coaster in the middle of a, you know, in the middle of the ride? I mean, that has to be some kind of a foo. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, accidents do happen, though, so I'm not talking about that. You know, there, there's been accidents with kids before, but I'm just saying, is a man just going to pick up and drop everything and get off the ride? I mean, come on, man. How about if you go to the Honda house, you know what I'm saying? Do you get off of the middle of the right there just to get stuck by Dracula or Frankenstein or the Wolfman or whatever the case may be or the Wicked Witch of the West? I mean, who who get off? Who will get off right there, you know what I'm saying? But this is the opposite of that. This is a blessing, you know. There's not, not a curse. Says over here, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I mean, those are four times recorded in verses 7, 11, 17, and 29 in this chapter alone. And we're not even finished. We have to read another chapter that the Holy Spirit says something to a group of people, the churches. You understand what I'm saying? But, you know, I mean, we're not finished. <laughs> no. So let's continue to read over here. You understand what I'm saying? And I have this document, so this is my guide. And hopefully I can remember all this all this stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, I did once before. Put it to memory, but I mean, you know. I mean, I just, I can't remember them now. I mean, I hope, hopefully one day, you know, I could do it again. But be that as it may. Let's go to uh, Revelation chapter 3, verses 6, 13, and 22. 6, 13, and 22. So let's check it out. You understand? 6, 13, and 22 of this chapter. I mean, I just, I, you know. I mean, I might have skipped it, but no, no, he's right here. Let's check it out. It says, he, this is uh, verse uh, 6 of chapter 3 of Revelation. He who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You see? The Spirit says to the churches. I'm just, just, just a deal. Now, let him hear is probably a subjunctive, uh, you know, um, of exhortation, you know. That's probably, you know, we could look at the Greek in another sitting when I just take the, and I think it's better just to take the pictures next time and just uh, scroll through them, you know. But we're almost finished anyway. Let's go to verse 13, and after that, to verse 22, and then we'll be finished. I mean, I'm sorry that I had a lot of evidence. I mean, I just, you know, I apologize. <laughs> this is glorious. So let's go over here to verse 13. It says something like this. He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You see? That's just it. So, so far we saw in the book of Revelation itself. Revelation chapter 2, verses what? Uh, 7, 11, 17, 29, and chapter 3, verses 6, uh, 13. You understand? I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> That's just it. You know, I'll get there eventually, you know. It's just the Acts of the Apostles have so many... It's so hard to remember uh, everything in the action. The apostles, you know what I mean? Let's go to Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter, uh, Revelation chapter uh, 3 and verse 22. He who has an ear, <laughs> I'm speaking like like uh, Camilo Sesto used to say, you know, uh, the pronounce the H, you know, <laughs> like that here, you know, like, like the like the chet in Hebrew, you know. That's, just, that's funny. Now, <laughs> this, uh, because the Spaniard, you know, uh, from Spain uh, 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 speaks like that. They say, like that, you know, using the H like a, a sort of like a guttural, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, verse 22, let's get back to this. He who has, okay, or has <laughs> an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. I mean, the prosecution stands against anyone 
who doesn't believe in the personality and the personality, not to mention, okay, you understand what I'm saying? The divinity with a capital D of the Holy Spirit. Ta Panuma. You understand what I'm saying? And don't give me this hocus pocus that doesn't is it is in a neuter construction. That has to do with grammatical uh grammatical gen uh, grammatical gender okay and that natural gender so that's just that's just a moot point and hey, don't give me this hocus bogus i mean you know it's just like they're making a brew at the tower you know what i'm saying it's like a long stick in a big pot you know what i mean putting a you know fire under it and stuff like that you know what i'm saying with their long hats and stuff like that well i mean you know johannes greenberg was a witch and their translation does come from Johannes Greenberg. I mean, they ordered five copies from the joint. Johannes Greenberg Foundation. I mean, so, I mean, you know, they, they were witches, though. I'm just saying. And then they don't even celebrate Halloween. The, the, you know, the, the Watchtower. It's kind of a little bit of hypocrisy. Yeah, they don't celebrate Halloween. Yet, they, they espouse the Bible that actually had a demonic influence. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying the Johannes Greenberg Bible was made by demons themselves wherever, wherever uh the you know the trinity was denied or, or things to that effect you understand what i'm saying but let's get back to the graphic i mean the prosecution stands it rests what a case okay christianity made against the defendants Y'all are guilty as charged in not believing in the, um, in, uh, the deity and the, uh, the Holy Spirit's personality. I mean, y'all are guilty. And the sentence is hell if you don't repent. I'm just saying. I mean, there's no acquittal here, so it's, just, it's not like that. A white stone and a black stone and all this other stuff. Now, now, you're guilty as charged. And the sentence is eternal death in a place called hell. Zillions upon zillions upon zillions of years in the lake of fire. That's just the deal. I mean, I'm just saying. If you don't believe that the Holy Spirit is a person, you're going to hell. Because if you don't, if you don't believe he's a person, you don't believe that he spoke through the prophets. If you don't believe he spoke through the prophets, well, you don't believe in prophecy. If you don't believe in prophecy, you don't believe in the Messiah. If you don't believe in the Messiah, well, you couldn't call upon the name of the Lord. It's just like a domino, a domino effect. If you don't believe those things, then you don't believe in the crucifixion, the deity of Christ, and the second coming, and the bodily resurrection from the dead. And you don't believe in that. You have to believe certain things. It's just not like that, you know? I exhort you to repent. Because it does say in all those verses of Scripture recorded, and the Scriptures cannot be broken by you or anybody from the tower or anywhere else, that the Holy Spirit spoke. This is a Greek word, primarily in some of those uh, situations. Not all, not all. We could we could do that in another in another study, maybe in an appendix. Okay, maybe we could look at you know, you know the Greek in some of these uh, scriptures. We don't have to look at all of them because it's the same structure found and recorded in one uh, letter. Let's say to the to the Ephesians, right? And it's the same kind of structure because it's, we read it. It's the same thing. What the Spirit says to the churches, uh, I mean, it's just it's the same construction. So why look at all of them? All we have to look look at is one, you understand? But it's just the Greek word for the Holy Spirit, uh, that the Holy Spirit said something. Just like uh, this is the Greek word found and recorded in the Greek Septuagint for God saying something to Adam. And even a serpent, you understand what I mean? That's just it. That's just it all across the board. I have the Hebrew and the Greek right here. The prosecution rests stands. And y'all are guilty. You who don't believe in the Trinity. You who don't believe in the deity of Christ. You have no excuse. You have no kick coming. You're an awful sinner in the hands of the living God. A God is a consuming fire. What is it going to be? Heaven or hell? 
What is it going to be? That's just a deal. So what do we learn? Well, I mean, there's a whole bunch of verses in Scripture that says that the Holy Spirit spoke. I mean, we looked at, you know, I mean, it's, it's just too many. I hope I can remember them all. I mean, it's just, you know, it's overwhelming, guys. It's like the flood. I mean, John chapter 16, verse 13, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse what? Verse 16, and chapter 8, verse uh, 29, and chapter 10, verse uh, 19, and I mean, I just die. What, chapter 11, verse 12, I think it was? Or chapter 13, verse 2, chapter 16, verse 6. Ah! And you got one in chapter 20, I think verse 23. I'm getting there. Chapter 21, verse 11, I believe, or something like that. And then, uh, you know, jump all the way to chapter 28, verses, uh, what was it, uh, 25 through 27, all across the board. Not to mention the one found in record in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Yes. Yes, in Hebrews, don't forget Hebrews, guys. Chapter 3, verses, what, 7 through 11? Chapter 10, verses 25 through, uh, is it a 15 through 17? I think 15 through 17. You know, you can check me out. I'm doing it by memory now because I'm too slow. As I mentioned, the one recorded in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. I mean, that's just a delicious one right there. I mean, that's just that's just it. And not to mention all the ones that I just mentioned that's recorded in Revelation chapter 2. There's four right in there. Uh, chapter 7 and 11 and 17 and then and, 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 and 29. That's a mention. Okay, chapter 3, verse 6. Verse 6. <laughs> so what was it? 6. Uh, what was it? 6. Um, and or, uh, chapter uh, 3, verse 6. And I think 11 or 17. Something like that. And then. Um, and uh, No, I think it's uh, chapter uh, 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 3, verses 6, 13, and 22. There you go. Eureka. Found uranium in Ashbury Park. There's no excuse. Holy Spirit said something. It's not like he used the law of agency like the tower says. Oh, it was really the law of agency, really. You know, I mean, it, not really. You know, God couldn't speak to fallen man and stuff like that. And then, uh, you know. But uh, I said, well, well, how about the, before the fall? I don't agree with that, but how about before the fall? Yeah, I agree that he spoke, said Mark from Missouri, sexy and sassy as he is. You understand what I'm saying? The former bo football player, you know, what them tights. Oh, yeah, no, I agree that, you know, before the fall, he might have spoke. I mean, yeah, 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 take that back. He had, I mean, but after the fall, oh, come on, man, you fell. You fell. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And all the king's horses and all king's men couldn't put the tower together again. You know what I'm saying? Nobody could. I'm just saying, the tower, Islam, I don't care. All of y'all who believe that the Holy Spirit is an it, a fuss, or whatever, they don't even believe in, in him altogether, are in the same boat. You're going to go to the same hell, the lake of fire, if you don't repent from your condition, your plight, your destiny. It's hell. That's just what it is. That's another topic altogether. You don't even believe in that. You know what I mean? Some of y'all do. I mean, Islam believes in hell, but they believe that they can escape hell by the scales of our eye. Well, if I got some more, you know, if I have, you know, good works on this side of the scale outweigh the bad works, well, I can get in. Well, that's you giving glory to yourself. Because you want those gurus or those luscious, luscious sexual creatures, you know what I'm saying, that you want. Y'all, you know, in, the, in Islam and the Mormon church can't stop, you know, thinking about sex. Procreation for all eternity. Sexual luscious beings, you know, wives, they probably y'all don't want to even call it the resurrection. You know, the Mormon church. Celestial kingdom, terrestrial kingdom, and all that other stuff. You're just a copycat of Islam, you know what I'm saying? You should be ashamed of yourselves. All right. This is Angelo Quinones giving glory to the God of Israel. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are very much alive at the time that Jesus said those words. Please subscribe to my channel. Please give me a thumbs up. <laughs> Please leave a comment on the screen. You know what I'm saying? And don't be naughty because I'm just going to delete it and block you. That's just the deal. Yes, you can have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
by believing certain things about Jesus. Not just the story of Jesus, but believing in details of what he did for you. Okay, and redeeming you. Because you couldn't save yourself, couldn't redeem yourself, couldn't buy yourself out of, out of hell. So he had to do it. Pay the follower the full price. He said to tell us that. The perfect tense right there. Reduplicating consonant tau. Connecting by connecting vowel epsilon. You understand what I'm saying? The debt has been paid in full. Your debt. Echoing what Psalm 22 of the last verse says. You understand what I'm saying? Um, chapter, uh, verse, you know, Psalm 21 in uh, Greek Septuagint. And not only that, but he was raised from the dead. Bodily, by the way, in the same body. Don't believe what the tower teaches. I mean, they're losers. Once a loser, always a loser. Says I win, tells you lose, guys. I mean, I can't lose. I'm on the winning side. What, what side are you on? Come on, man. You lost before you got into the match. Stop playing tennis with God. You understand what I'm saying? You can't handle the serve. It's too fast. I mean, you know, it's just like Pete Sanford serving at you. Okay, Roger Nadal, you know, uh, cornering you. And that's just the deal. Can't, can't, can't win. Especially on clay. <laughs> you understand? You can't do it. So you better come to God. Confess your sins. Confess that you've been a horrible sinner to God. You have children, some of you. You understand what I'm saying? Don't think about yourself. Yeah, 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 punk. Think about your kids. Think about your kids. Think about your future. Think about the fire in Hawaii and how horrible that is. Do you know the hell is just millions of times more worse than that? Because you can't escape it. Some people escaped that fire. Some people didn't. Some people did. Some people outran, outran the flames and jumped into the into the into the into water. They either died or just escaped it altogether. But there ain't no escape ever in hell. Just saying, there ain't no escape. Because somebody's going to throw you in hell, and you're going to be there burning for all eternity for zillions upon zillions of years. And when that's over, you have another z a group of uh, zillions of years to do. And when that's over, you got zillions of more years to burn up in hell. Because you didn't believe the message. You wanted to believe a founder that only went to the second grade or the seventh grade. That's what you wanted to do. Yeah, I wanted to hang around. Not doing nothing for God. You know what I'm saying? And then when God gives you a box at the end of time, spiritually speaking, a box full of flowers that are messed up and old and raggedy and all dried up, what are you going to say to God? Well, God is going to say, this is what you gave me, so I'm giving you your back. That's just it. Can't jip me out of uh, out of what's mine. Can't rob me. It's my legs are like Malachi all over again. You understand what I'm saying? How did we rob God? Yeah, just yeah, just just you rob them by not speaking the truth to 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 some of His elect people. Take care, guys. So I hope this serious message really got into your heart. Because if it didn't, you'll spend eternity in hell. Not only that, you'll spend eternity, you, you spend hell here while going to the lake of fire. Okay? It won't be heaven on earth. No matter what you do, no matter what you see, no matter what you buy. If there's one thing you can't buy heaven, you can't buy God. And you know something? You can't buy the Holy Spirit. May you and your money perish. May you and your money go to hell. Because you can't buy the Holy Spirit. He's God. And you know something? He spoke. Thank you.